I decided to make this video because it's been like what over a year now and you guys always wanted to know like what happened or how I was diagnosed so I guess I could go ahead and make this little video real quick anyways let's see it's been three years now uh, when I was how old am I 18 17 new stop I was 14 turning 15 and what had happened was for about a week I had like a little flu I thought I had the flu I had like flu symptoms and it went away I was a cheerleader at the time so I had to miss out on all those practices but anyway had the flu it went away the next like two weeks and then it came back all of a sudden um, then the flu felt like it was really the a real bad case of the flu right all right, anyway, um, my symptoms were um, drinking a lot of water. I used to be like, Mama, I am drinking a lot of water. Aren't you proud of me? And then I used to drink some a whole lot of milk, which was very random because I don't like milk. And I was drinking that milk like it was chocolate milk. Anyway, and let's see what else. Um, I would go to the bathroom like every 15 minutes. Like when I mean... A serious pee. I mean, not no tink, 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 tink. I mean the, uh, the, uh, you know, you know how the little fire hose, that powerful. Yeah, that that's how powerful it was. Okay. Anyway, um, so I would pee a lot. I remember I was at my friend's house. I'm like, girl, I gotta use the bathroom again. Girl, I gotta use the bathroom again. She was like, you need to get that checked out. But anyway, I just let that fly. Anyway. Uh, so what had happened was, one day, I had the flu symptoms really bad, right? To the point that I could not uh, stand up. Well, I could stand up, but I would like wobble, fall, hit it to stuff. Like I wasn't like straight. Then I stayed in my room the whole day. My grandma and my mom went out and they went to run some errands. And I sat in the house and then my breathing was kind of weird. Like I couldn't breathe. And... Um, so Patrice came and gave me my machine because I had asthma and we see we had kept the machine we keep getting the medications just in case cause, you know winter, winter time it flares up a little bit but anyway she gave me my machine like twice and within an hour which is really bad anyway but I couldn't breathe then I called my mom mom came home she tried to keep making me drink Gatorade and eat food but I threw it all up like everything that went in my stomach I threw it up and then um, I was like, you know what, I'm going to the hospital. So she said, let's go to the hospital at night instead, like at 1, 2 in the morning because it's empty. Instead of instead of going at like 9, 8 or 9. So I said, all right. So I just sat there, you know, sat there the whole time. I didn't know that I was unconscious. I didn't know that. I felt like I was asleep. Anyway, it was like around 9 o'clock. And I was like, we got to go now because I feel bad. So, I couldn't get dressed because I was so weak. My mom had to dress me. I couldn't walk down the steps. I was so weak. My mom had to help me. And then, um, went to the hospital. It was kind of blurry because I don't remember the whole ride. I was unconscious. And I got to the hospital. I got into a wheelchair. I met my whole family. Not my whole family. But I met my some of my family there. They met me there, which was Cray. Because they got there before we did. Anyway, I was in the, the little, um, in my cool ride, my whip, okay, my, uh, wheelchair, and just waited, went in the back, they was like, they checked my vital signs, and they was like, oh, she just has acid reflex. She has acid reflex, okay? They give me this medicine, and it numbs my tongue, okay? I could talk, they said, how does it feel? I said, I was like, oh. It's numb. Try to talk, but I couldn't. Anyway, go home. They give me some pills. I do not remember the ride home, okay? I was unconscious. I do not remember the ride home. Every time somebody say Paris, I get up. But after that, I'm out, right? So I go home. I try to get some rest. My mom's still trying to get me to eat because I wasn't going to eat. And eventually, um, um, I wanted some water. I really wanted some water because when your blood sugars are high, you want water and water I'll explain it I'll explain it a little bit but anyway 
wanted water i couldn't talk this was the, at the point i couldn't talk i couldn't see i couldn't walk all right i wrote on paper was right because i couldn't talk i wrote i need water it looked like kindergarten okay looked like a kindergarten wrote it gave it to patrice patrice trying to give me some water but i couldn't drink it that's how weak i was okay my mom calls the ambulance. It was a little blurry, but I do I do remember seeing those hot men in my room. I ain't gonna lie. Anyway, guy was flirting with Patrice. He was like, oh, you a twin. You a twin. He was a little, you know, fruit. He was like, you a twin. And and I just remember the 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 white men in my room. Okay. Anyway, they picked me up and they told me to walk because um they didn't take me to the um hospital they said i had the flu and they said they would take me to the hospital i would have to sit in the waiting room so my mom was like i ain't about to pay all this money and i'm gonna sit in the waiting room so my mom took me right my mom took me this is the part i don't remember thing okay she took me to the hospital and as soon as i got there they said i had um they checked my blood i think i don't know y'all <laughs> i think they checked my blood and my blood sugar was 1300 which was 1300 and it's not supposed to go over if you are a diabetic it's not supposed to go over 180 and it was 1300 and all my organs were shut down my veins artery whatever the heck it is was shut down so it took them about an hour to get ivs in me they called the helicopter um but they called the helicopter because i wasn't stable and i was just dying and dying and dying but then they called the helicopter off because I was stable. They got the IVs in me. Then they transferred me to Washington Hospital. Not Washington Hospital. A hospital in Washington called Children's Hospital. And um, I woke up eight hours later. I'm about to get this dog. Hold up. Okay. So I woke up eight hours later in the ICU. And I remember my TV was real fuzzy. Yeah, my TV was real fuzzy and everything. But I had some family there. And I was still waking up, going back to sleep, waking up, well, going unconscious after my eight hours of being completely out. And um, let's see what else happened. Oh, I woke up with eight IVs. I had IVs in my foot, in my legs, in my arm, in my hands. Then, once I got up, up, I'm like asking them, like, what the heck is wrong with me? Why am I in this hospital room? Well, yeah. And I'm just like, what the heck? Like, I got IVs. I'm like, dang, I got IVs in me, though. I got little oxygen thing on my nose. What the heck? But anyway, I wasn't panicking that much. You know, I was kind of calm. I was like, whatever. I don't know. I just wasn't scared or nothing. I was just very calm, you know. Then... Um, my mom left and came back because she had to get a shower and my cousin stayed with me and then what happened let me think then um, the doctor came in like three doctors came in with their white coats and their little computers and their little notepads and it was like Paris you have type 1 diabetes I'm like I'm like hold up hold up first thing I said I was like I'm not old okay I'm not old that's one and two, I'm not fat. Okay. And it was like, oh, no, you don't have that kind. I said, well, what kind do I have? I said, do I have the good kind or do I have the bad kind? It was like, well, you don't have the good kind, but you, but the bad, you kind of have the, the more severe kind. I'm like, oh, are you serious? And this is all I hear the whole time. Paris, you could get your leg cut off. Paris, you could go blind. Paris, I'm like, the whole time, I'm like, like, I hear them, but it's just not clicking, right? It's not clicking yet. It ain't click yet. Whew. But then they told me, um, like, I kept using, I guess, let me just, let me, all right, let me back up a little bit. I woke up with no clothes on, okay? And then I was like, for one, I was like, where, where my clothes at? One. Then they told me that I, that I peed in the bed or something about my organs was just tripping. And I peed in the bed, and they had to transfer me naked into another bed. My grandma and my mom. Okay. Okay. Then, when, after that happened, I had some family that visited me when I was out. I was, 
you know. And they said, I remember when my grandma came in, I said, I was like, Grandma! And I went back out. And I do remember that. I remember it was very blurry. And they said that the whole nurses and doctors on that floor was freaked out. And they was like, wow, what just happened? Because they never seen that ever happen before. And it was just crazy. But anyway, let me fast forward a little bit. Do, do, do. They gave me some lunch. Okay, this was before I was leaving the ICU the same day. They was like, wow, I can't believe she's up and all this stuff. Because I could have been a vegetable or whatever. But then it was like, you want to eat? I was like, heck, yeah, I was hungry. I wanted some water. They won't let me drink no water, y'all. Hey, they had to give me ice chips. Anyway, they gave me some peanut butter and uh, I don't know what, what that... I don't know what it was that I was eating, but they gave me some some diet juice. I was like, okay. Then it was like, they gave me peanut butter. I was about to eat the peanut butter, and I'm allergic to peanut butter. They was like, oh my God. My mom was like, don't eat it, because my mind wasn't right. They was, my mom was like, don't eat it, it's peanut butter. I was like, oh, shoot. Like, dang, I was about to eat peanut butter and about to be in more trouble. But anyway. Then it was like, you gotta use the bathroom? It was like, I sure do where the bathroom at. Then it was like, you ain't walking to no bathroom. You about to, I'm about to bring the bathroom. I'm like, man, I was so ready to get up out of there. I felt like I was 100% and I felt great. And then it was like, all right, it's time for you to go in your room. So they wheeled me up there. They told me I couldn't walk. So they had to put me in a wheelchair. Wheeled me up to my room. My room was like a luxury palace, y'all. My room was decked. Out. I had two flat screen TVs. Ooh, my bathroom was tight, y'all. Ooh, get it. Ooh, I was living the best hospital experience except the sick part. But anyway, then this this is where the the annoying part came in. This lady come in. Okay, Paris, on your TV, we want you to watch some type of. We want you to watch this diabetic or something. It gives you a little more description of what diabetes is, okay? I was like, okay, okay. I ain't do it. I ain't touched that remote to turn on no daggone diabetes. I was watching, um, what's that show? What's that show on the Food Network? Um, um, Man vs. Food. That's what I watch. They talking about watch some diabetic crap. And then they gonna say that I got, what, an eight-hour class the next day? You really think I was about to... No. No. Anyway, the next day came... Yeah, the next day came. And, uh... Um, I had to, like, get up, start walking a little bit. I was a little, uh, you know what I'm saying? But I was good. I had to take my little pole, pimped out pole with me, all connected and everything. Then they eventually took out all of those IVs, by the way, because... Uh, I was getting better. But anyway, I had, I had in like four IVs at the moment and they just kept taking more out as the day went. I was like, hey, one arm for it. Hey, one arm for it. Okay, anyway, let me stop. Then we went to this class. This lady was extremely annoying. If you see this, I apologize, but I was sick at the moment, okay? Anyway, um... Went to the class. It was so long, y'all. I was so tired. We had to learn how to draw insulin through a, um, a syringe. I had, they had me on syringes. And then um, had to learn how to carb, not carb count, but how to, um, what foods to eat, what foods not to eat, what to do if you have a low blood sugar, what to do if you have a high blood sugar. Then my mom went to the, we went back to our room. My mom had an extra four hours to learn how syringes go. And this was, I stayed in the hospital for a whole week. And, um, yeah, stayed in the hospital for a whole week. So this was like a whole week process. And the food was delicious. And, um, that was weird. Because I did not know why they kept coming in my room giving me shots. I never really asked. That was kind of weird. Yeah. And then the doctor used to come in all times of the night trying to draw blood. And I remember I was like, oh my God, you going to draw my blood? He was like, oh, relax. Because when I woke up from that eight hours out, when I woke up, I had like weird bruises all over my body. Like I had bruises. I had scratches, blood all over my body. It was just so disgusting and crazy then i had these little tags that will stick all on my body too i was like the heck is this rip the heck is this rip it was crazy y'all it was crazy it was crazy it was real crazy 
And then, uh, let's see, what else happened that was kind of crazy? Um, then my mom, they told me I couldn't leave unless my mom gave me a shot of insulin. And she did. And then after that, like the nurses and everyone was in the room when she gave me that shot so that I could go home. All the nurses was in there shaking their butters like, oh, get it. Get it, mama. Get it, mama. And they was all clapping and stuff. I'm like, dang, this is a reunion. You know, like it's, it's something big that I'm going home. So after they did their little celebration and all that good stuff, nurses cheering and stuff, got my stuff together, walked out like a boss. Then I went home. And as soon as I got home, my grandma was there, Patrice was there, and I went straight upstairs, got in my mama's bed. I did not go in my I did not go in my room because that was the most scariest moment of my life. I did not ever go in my room until we moved. We moved a month after I got sick. So just imagine how much drama that was in one month. Okay? I'm packing. My all my boxes was ready, like we was ready to move. And I get sick. I'm in my mom's room for a whole month while she's packing. Then we move into this house. And then it was like I had to go um to a doctor, like a follow-up appointment. Went to that stupid follow-up appointment. That's where I, you know, guess that's where I found out that I had a love for being a nurse in the endocrinology field. And the endocrinology field is Children with type 1 diabetes or children with hormone problems, growth problems, that type of thing. But anyway, um, I guess I should explain what type 1 diabetes is if y'all don't know. Type 1 diabetes is when your pancreas cells or your pancreas are no longer working and you have to take insulin to cover up your pancreas cells let's see you have to diet like you can't eat too much sweets or carbohydrates or bring your blood sugar sky skyrocket so that's why you take insulin before you eat because it's your sales I'm taking pig insulin I mean pig yeah yeah I read some that they said that the insulin come from the pigs so the pigs are keeping me alive anyway and if your blood sugar goes low, which means you have low sugar in your blood, it drops quick within like five minutes. You need to get some juice. Not even five minutes. Like your blood sugar will go drop, drop, drop in five minutes until you have a seizure or die. So you need juice or sugar or sweets, anything, food, whatever that you can reach at the moment to bring it back up. Your blood sugar is only allowed to be in between 80 and 150. For children and older adults, it's different, but as long as you take great care of yourself, you will live a long, happy life. Like, at school, this my teacher told me that she knows an 80-year-old man that is still working, and he has type 1 diabetes, and he's still very, very healthy. So that was nice to know. And if you don't take care of yourself, you would definitely get one leg cut off, you get, um, like, blind or kidney failure, heart disease, the list goes on. All kind of nerve damage problems. Whew, it's a lot, y'all. But I'm making sure I, I take care of myself. And I'm, I think I'm doing a pretty good job at it. And you have to exercise, too. Exercise is pretty much number one. <sighs> but anyway, that's my little story. I hope you guys enjoyed this this little vlog and if you guys have any questions go ahead and ask I don't mind answering them and we have like a whole list of other videos to make whenever we have a good time like this we will definitely make them if you guys enjoyed this beautiful uh, video I'll see y'all in the next one okay <laughs> alright